wanted to extend an invitation to us. And that invitation is in scriptures like the scripture that says, Come, let us reason together. God wants to be in possession of your mind. He wants to activate your mind so that you can have the capacity to think his thoughts. But as powerful as your mind is, because if God does not get you to conceive what he intends to do, uh, you, you can't even exercise faith for it. So part of the things that occasions uh, faith being furnished in your heart is that God speaks directly to you by proceeding word that is issued from his mouth. This proceeding word can come in terms of, in form of a voice. It can come in form of a picture that God puts before your face in a vision or in a dream. What God is trying to do is to take you outside of your own operating box and to show you something that is beyond the scope of the current limitation that you function in so that you can exercise your faith to migrate. The mind is a powerful asset, but just as it is an asset to God, it can also be an asset to the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we pray in a moment as we dedicate our mind to God, your mind? He wants to transmit some signals into your mind. He wants to transmit some wisdom into your mind. Oh, we cry about the economic crunch and the meltdown. If only God can have access to your mind. If only he can invite you in your mind to that place where you can reason on the strength of his own frequency. He can take you from where you are. He can take you to where you ought to be. I surrender my mind. I surrender my mind. I surrender my mind. I surrender my mind. Speak through my mind. Summon me in my mind to come deliberate, to come reason with you. Oh my God, He is inviting you. Your mind can come into that framework of God's invitation where He begins to transmit His thoughts into your thoughts he wants to upgrade your life he wants to upgrade my life and part of the way he's gonna do that is that he's gonna invite you he's gonna welcome you oh my god Membro conte ezeka la bunda sike. Raskofa la musha la gata. Ta consele. Preco santoria. Preco se la banda. Preco macadala. Asesi. Ala bronde. Escote ni mahan soria. I casata la bonde. I la brosca telia. He wants you to come. Because he wants to reason with you. He wants to take you out of the reasoning that has been occasioned by your frustration, by your circumstances, by your situation. He said, come! Let us reason together. Let us reason together. He wants to cause us to be able to see from the perspective of his thought level. Come! There is an invitation. There is an invitation. So we submit our mind to the workings of his spirit. We submit our mind. Even today, we submit it. We submit it. Oh God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the name of God. Jesus. The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, even as thy soul prospereth. So the external prosperity that you can enjoy is dependent on 
the prosperity you enjoy in your soul. I've seen many people before that came for counseling. And if you attempt to take them out of their thinking box, and it is that thinking box that has confined them, made them limited, made them insufficient, and you begin to provoke them with a few questions that will get them to think outside of that box and to consider the liberty that God is offering us in his word, suddenly they snap. Because they like their box. They like containment. But if God is going to change your story, he gives you an invitation. He said, come, let us reason together. Go out of your own space of thinking and think of my frequency. The moment your mind can capture it, the moment you are able to conceive it, it is a possibility. So if God needs to break a yoke, <laughs> the yoke is not totally broken if your mind cannot respond to the invitation that God is making available. If you cannot see what God is seeing, you cannot be at home with the ideas he's bringing into your mind. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Once upon a time, someone came and I felt a witness in the Holy Ghost to help him in whatsoever he wants to do. That means the body of sourcing funds of making things happen was taken from him but he was still bound he couldn't imagine that that bondage ah in the height of my goodwill he could not be helped because he was bound he was trapped down i could see the fetters but the fetters were not physical chains they were not cords they were in the mind and as long as he wears that mind, he can have a fine face, but he will labor as a slave. Can you set yourself free today? And mount up with wings and say, Lord, I surrender. I'm ready to accept what you have to say to me. I am willing to flow on your frequency. I break beyond the reach, the stranglehold of the fetters. I accept the invitation, the invitation that you have extended to me. I want to reason with you on your frequency. I want to reason with you on your frequency. I want to reason with you. Can you? Can, oh my God. Your experience is not as valid as the voice of God, as the word of God. The way you grew up is not as valid as the word of God. The, the people that abused you, that took advantage of you, is not as valid as the word of God. Can you? Can you accept the temptation to come where God is? He wants to reason with you. He wants to discuss with you. He wants to build his thoughts in your mind. He wants to build his thoughts in your mind. Gorasi, Goromo Satelli. Goromo siko brande Antoso koborote skame Ale atene Ronda suka Agaito sameli ate Iko pre Will you allow him? Will you give him half a chance So that he can impregnate your mind With some thoughts That are not bound like your circumstances Some thoughts That will give you liberty To think beyond your context Beyond your premise God is extending an invitation. An invitation. We accept it. We accept it tonight. We accept it tonight. We are willing. We are willing to make the move. Yes, we believe your word. We believe your word. Oh my God. Ego bo santori. Ali Kamendo Kondo Rescontomina la Combele Elamo Cosquito Brondo Aliasu que tembre his ali Anto la Bobo Baliasico Abras que tobria la Babosa di Iscoboron Teze Abrisco Semina Aluke Branta Baboria Brasquetaya 
Abras Gatombo, Ezika Braita Kubalando, Abrifo Sevinade, Egese Kutubris Kontaba, Paras Konte, Alisko Barakunda, Braskesa Sude Mantelia. Don't allow your experience, don't allow your experience to limit you. God is trying to invite you to come reason with Him. He has a better plan than your experience. He has a better plan than your failures. You need to come. You need to come. You need to migrate. God is extending an invitation. Oh! Abo Sisela. Prescote Marando Compre. Yango da Basukle Pesque. La Brasuka Bala Masaita. Enta Matondo. Prasesa Liko Bari. Askito Prata Baboria. Esia Tande. Atose Abasiato. Did the doctor say you will not be able to have any child? Your Falutian Jews are not in good shape. God is saying, come. We can reason together. We can talk about this matter. Hey! Kako Sano Mande. Esko Ten. Esa Minaila. Ebro Tantela. Akaya Bonda. Akaya Bonda. Akaya Bonda, Akaya Sagena Kande, Atlanta Baboria, Escatevinose. You can come. We can talk about it. We can reason about it. I can show you my perspective. I can show you my opinion. Oh my God. Can you see? Can you see what seest thou, O son of man? What can you see? What can you see? Come, let us reason together. together let us reason together Gloria a 
Second Kings chapter 7 verse 18 and 19. I'll show you what the devil does to the mind of the believer, how he puts him under pressure to accept defeat. And you must understand that the first premise and the first theater of warfare is in your mind. And the devil is aware that it doesn't matter how powerful your call is and the allotment that are associated with it. If he can play with your mind, you will reject your goodness, you will accept a curse. Satan is always playing tricks on our minds. If, for instance, in the book of Second Kings, where I asked you to open, the Bible says, And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. This is a prophetic word. This is what God is saying. But in the next verse, and the Lord answered the man of God and said, now behold, if the Lord should make the windows in heaven, might such a thing be? God has spoken and this man is questioned that even if God should make windows in the heaven. How can these things be? <laughs> God in the utterance that he gave. Was attempting to take 
everybody in captivity out of his bounds. But there were men that were still bound in their minds such that when the word of liberation came out, they questioned Until we break the yoke that is on the mind, we will never mount up. Shall these things be? Why didn't the man keep quiet? He so believed that the only thing that was going to come out of the situation was continuous captivity. Even though God has spoken a word that is bound to his integrity, the man said that if God were to open the windows of shall these things Will you accept tonight to go beyond the chains? You see, when we are done fasting, I will be in the office. You'll be coming with testimonies from, oh my. From February, March, testimonies. Testimonies. Every month. Every month. Because we're going to put Satan where he belongs and we will give Satan no place. Can you say one more time before we attend to the word of God uh, this evening? Uh, Lord, I, I break beyond the fetters of my mind. I go beyond the bounds of my mind. I accept your invitations. I want to think your thoughts. I want to speak your words. I want to understand your counsel. I want to function in your purpose. Oh my God. My situation does not have authority like my destiny. So my situation cannot be my doctrine. That is something destiny is saying. <laughs> I want to reason on your frequency. 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 It's time for me to take a leap, a leap of faith. It is time for me to take a leap, a leap, a leap. I believe, help thou my own belief. I believe, help thou my own belief. It is time for me to take a leap, a leap of faith. Asosela broske taida. Akande broska diva santoria. Apresi kopakula katelibo gose. Ramba sanda baboria. Escude masate. Igabonda. Asabri. Akabalanto. Escobri atababote. Alata kunzali. Abranda basale. Abranda basale. Abranda bakoda base. Abrisko kapu. Akakabubu Santelia, Abresco Tokome, Lato Sico, Alata Cantelia, Alata Cuse, Brantabo, Brantabo Santa Batalia, Eco Sabinate, Eziza Natoria, Abra Masanto. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Father, we come to your table to commune with you on the ground of your word tonight. Such word that has the capacity to set at liberty 
and to dismantle the bounds that hold us in our mind. Let everyone under the sound of my voice be given liberty to think outside of the box that circumstances are built, outside of the box that situations are built, outside of the box that experiences have been to come to that point where we are at liberty to contemplate the wondrous things that you have set in store for they that love you thank you father in jesus mighty name amen you may be seated god bless you indeed amen so we are trying to go into the practicality how the warfare of the mind is and the arsenal that God has made available to us to contend at that level. One thing you must understand is that Satan will use every situation to harass your mind. Every situation. If someone dies in the family, Satan will use that debt to harass your mind. He will try to paint a picture of how vulnerable you are and there is no need for you to strive because you are feeble. You can be taken out any time. He comes to preach around every scenario. But you see, the, the issue is this. We do not have a covenant with death. We have a covenant with life. Death has no power over us as long as we drink the water of purpose. It means that our time, that death will have authority over us, is not yet. And what the devil does is that he begins to steal into your mind so that you begin to lose grip on the significance for which God apprehended you in Jesus Christ. My Father in the Lord always says, and I quote, that destiny is stronger than death. And the reason why he says this, the the depth or the origin of this quote is that he is a minister of the gospel somewhere in northern Nigeria, and uh, he has been on the death list, the death list on several people that hate the labors of Jesus in the earth. He has been on their death list, and they have made attempts at his life at close range, and uh, every time he comes out without a scratch. So he postulated a theory. And what is the theory? Destiny is stronger than death. So if the devil can get to manipulate your mind so that your grip on destiny, your grip on your calling will begin to win, then death can have authority in your space. So he will take advantage of every situation that takes place. Just in case you fall sick and you feel weak, he begins to whisper into your ears and uh, what he's trying to do is to make you give up from within and if you yield to the pressure of his mind bending tactics you become a victim are you still with me he will preach to you whenever you are financially down and you seem to be financially incapacitated he will show up every situation whatsoever Every circumstance whatsoever that happens in your life that seems to be somewhat negative becomes a very good premise for the devil to storm your mind and begin to make his suggestions. And as he does it, he has this, this strange ability of resilience. He is so consistent. And if you do not have the word of God in your vessel, you will believe the lie of the enemy. And so, I need to bring you into a few things that I deduced uh, because when we began to talk about the warfare of the mind, our reference scripture was 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning from verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare and our carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations. Uh, somewhere along the line, I'm, I'm going to go into the question and answer, but we need to cover, there's a theoretical aspect that we need to cover. 
uh, Pastor Philip. All right, so when the time comes, you'll put the questions on the dashboard, and then we will attend to it as the Lord gives us wisdom. This part of the syllabus, this theoretical part of the syllabus I want us to, com to, um, to complete is required uh, so that we can have a very firm theoretical context uh, that supports the engagement that we're going to be doing subsequently. Okay? So we need to finish this aspect of the syllabus because when we are done with the warfare of the mind, we go to another theater of warfare and then another theater of warfare before we begin to talk about the arsenals that we have uh, available to us to prosecute this warfare and indicators that will show that you are hitting the target. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts, exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that's the context of the warfare of the mind. And there are three approaches to arresting Satan's attack on the mind. Oh, I forgot something. Oh, Jesus. I have a friend in South Africa. He's a minister of the gospel. And uh, please, Philip, come. Philip, come. You need to pick my phone. And uh, you will get that voice note out of my phone. And you put it into the uh, audio system. I like everybody to listen to that voice note. Uh, when I met this guy, uh, I met him on. Where did I meet him? I met uh, I met him on uh, Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger, because when people send messages to our Facebook inbox, because the messages are directed at me, I answer them. All right, so sometimes at midnight, I'm still answering messages as much as possible. Uh, I try to answer them, uh, even though we have people that have that assignment. But I do it myself so that I can have the authority to give them the kind of answers that they want. And then I met this guy in the room attempting to chat. I, 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 I read through the chat, and I discerned that his spirit was genuine. So I... Um, decided to be committed to him. And when I found that he was a minister of the gospel, I decided to pay attention to his request. And um, the first thing we had to battle with was that he had a crisis in the area of the warfare of the mind. So we have dealt with the crisis. We just spoke yesterday night, so there's victory. But I asked him to make a voice note uh, of his experience for the purpose of this lecture so that our knowledge bank can be adequately fortified before we go into the practicalities. Um, the Word of God is so vast, and the Bible is highly intellectual. And many times in order for us to understand how life applicable, the golden words of scripture is, we need to bring resources like this into our capacity building program. So, uh, Philip, yeah, this is the voice note. Okay, so, Pastor Philip has the equipment, and we are going to, before we get into analyzing his experience, let's do the Bible study aspect so that you will not be found wanting in any aspect of this um, subject. Uh, accurate discipleship is furnished when we are biblically accurate and spiritually accurate. Can you repeat that after me? Biblical discipleship is furnished when we are biblically accurate and spiritually accurate. It is possible for me to be releasing doses of scripture. And you have scripture in your head. But you don't know how the practicality of the things that are in your head are. You are still as ignorant as someone that does not know. Because what you have gathered in your head does not afford you 
the equipment needed for practice. So we are going to go into the knowledge aspect and the engagement aspect, and we're going to practice some of that before we leave today. We expect that before the week runs out, before next week runs out, you will begin to have testimonies of librations of liberty. And by the time we are hitting the month of June, uh, your testimonies uh, would have been quite significant. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, so one of the things I want to bring to our notice about the warfare of the mind, number one, is that we cast out devils, and when you cast out devils, you expel demons through the agency of our authority in Christ Jesus. And when you expel demons, demons live quickly, especially if your authority is valid, if your authority is authentic. Demons live what? Quickly. Have you seen us cast out devils here before? The demons recognize our authority and they begin to tremble instantly and we begin to issue commands. It's a, it's a good place to be, uh, issuing commands to, to demons. It, it, it's a wonderful experience. And if you have not issued any command to any demon all your life until this time, we will create an atmosphere, an opportunity for the devil too to hear your voice and you will see the kind of ventilation that is administered to your soul when you realize that your words are not empty. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So we cast out devils using the instrumentality of authority and such expelling of devils are instant. But we cast down strongholds. Strongholds are of the mind. We cast out devils, that is instant. We cast down strongholds of the mind. The difference between casting out and casting down. Are you, are you here? Now, that's where I got casting down from. I got it from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Casting what? Down. You see, the thing about these arguments and reasonings that the devil brings our way is that they seem to exalt themselves over and above the authority and the place of the word of God in our lives. So they are always trying to grow height. And the moment you consider the reasoning from the kingdom of darkness to be more valid than the word of God, you become trapped in the manipulation that the devil has in mind. So the Bible says that there is a deliberate activity that we must switch into to, to depose that authority, to reduce that authority to what it really is, which is nothing and nonsense. Through a process called casting down. Whereas casting out devils is instantaneous, casting down strongholds takes a process of time. That means it is something you will continue doing until you have reduced the height of that argument and it no longer stands in the way of your conviction. If you, if you allow it lie, if you sleep over it, you will become a victim. And you will tell stories like, like okay, like uh, there's a preacher, he said he had a, had a vision, an encounter in 1980. And he saw in the city of Ayangba a, an auditorium that was 13,000 sitter. Hallelujah. And he was the pastor of that ministry that um, had an auditorium that was what? 30,000 sitter. And uh, he wrote the prophecy in a journal a very robust journal that was well secure. And he, anywhere there was a prayer meeting, he would go and read it out. That, oh, hear ye Israel. In your city, an auditorium will be built. And it's going to be 30,000 sitter. That is when he got the vision. He went to everywhere people prayed and he shared the mind of God. Then Satan now reminded him of his poverty. Do, have you ever, hallelujah, there was one day Satan wanted to deal with me those days. 
I put two of my surviving trousers on the line. <coughs> and when I came back to the line, it was the good trouser was the one they stole. The one they left had a hole at a strange place. And then wind now blew it. As the wind blew the trouser like this, Satan spoke. I said, you see, <laughs> what is left? This is what is left of you. May you receive grace to cast, <laughs> to cast down. Satan. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus. When the wind blew the trousers like this, he, he, he spoke. The sight was strange. And he said, oh, this is. Satan knows the moment to puncture your faith. <laughs> so uh, we are going to go into the practicalities of casting down. So that's what we do. We cast down. And it is something that you must keep on doing. If, if something happened to you, you were unfortunate and you got raped. And then when you were um, a young lady coming up, you were 15 years old, you got raped. Satan will come and say, oh my. He will want to make you feel incapable. Want to make you feel rejected. Want to make you feel so you see, he's building a case, and just like arguments are in the court of law, there is a tendency that you can believe him that you are good for now because he has defeated you in your soul. That which he has programmed into your life will begin to come to pass. But the Bible says, Let God be true, and let every man be what? A liar. So we need to cast it down. If we don't cast it down, it's so bogus, it's so wide, it's so tall that it will not form the edifice that drives your philosophy. I want to say again, casting down strongholds is not as instantaneous as casting out devils. Number two, our life is currently flowing in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our life is currently flowing in the direction of our strongest thoughts. The Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So it doesn't matter whether you are an anointed preacher, you are a powerful preacher, you are an expositor per excellence, your life is going to flow in the direction of your strongest thought. And Satan is aware of this. And that's the reason why he wants to defeat you by setting up strongholds in your mind. If you wake me up from sleep and say, young man, where are you going? I'll give you, you will get tired of my presentation. You will get tired. Even in my sleep, I was Thinking about it, my spirit was meditating on how hey, the avenues that we can exploit in order to promote. Uh, it, 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 Satan has lost it. In my case, he has lost it. He has, ah. There are such, there are people like us that Satan has lost on our case because there is no argument he can bring that can find a footing. No argument. And I'm not saying that uh, this is my disposition on a good day. My brother got kidnapped. And he died in captivity. After we had paid every ransom in millions. We collected the money. But they now called us that we should come and take the cops. I hope you know that's a nothing hot like that. And then you see your own brother's body dead in the forest. Ask my wife. I never shed a tear. Not because I am not. I wasn't emotionally attached to him. Because I know the scriptures. If you know the scriptures, you will never allow yourself to slip into a situation of excessive grief or excessive excitement. Are you there? You will stay in between. So if I have an alert of one billion, you will not know. Because I will not be excited. Do you understand? 
If that comes into my life, it means God is accelerating our mission. And you will see the effect of one billion naira on the field of mission. You will see the effect. Hallelujah. Are you, are you there? So yes, it was a situation of grief. But I didn't shed a tear. Because I didn't want to give Satan an opportunity to preach to me. And the people that came, they came with the intention to comfort me. I quoted some scriptures and I discovered they were the ones that needed comfort. <laughs> and we are still here. We have not broken down. I will never afford Satan that luxury of sitting down for him to be my preacher. To bend my mind and to plant in me philosophy that will injure my purpose. Enjoy my destiny. Your life flows in the direction of your most predominant thought. So we are trusting God to uproot from your heart quickly. Thoughts that have found a, a seemingly permanent place in your heart so that God can replace them with thoughts that are from Him. Are you there? Finally, number three, thoughts are openers to the Spirit. John chapter 13, beginning from verse 21 to verse 27. Thoughts are openers to spirits. When Jesus, as God said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. This word of knowledge. Someone is not listening to me. This scripture is one of the scriptures in the Bible that is an example of the manifestation of the gift of word of knowledge. They were just sitting together, eating together, and suddenly his spirit became troubled and Oh my God. He tried to decode why the Holy Ghost in him was troubled. And then he decoded it. He discerned it. And he said it. There's one of you here that will betray me. Now the reason why Jesus was able to pick this was because the conception of betrayal had already entered into that personality's heart. And why they sat at meat. Evangelist, I don't know if this has happened to you. You just sit amongst a people and you know their thoughts. It, it, it happens to, not every time, but it happens to me sometimes. I, I just came into one place. I saw some brethren sitting down. And as I came into their knees, I just knew that it was me they were talking about in the past for five minutes. I just knew. So I quietly stood up and gave them a parable so that they would know that I know. <laughs> You know what? I like the Holy Ghost. Jesus was eating. And then the traitor that had begun to meet people behind the scene on how to betray him joined the fellowship. And his spirit was troubled. And instantly he decoded and declared it. One of you here will betray me. I was thinking that this, uh, this supernatural revelation was striking called in the heart of his carrier. All right, next verse. Verse 22. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Next verse. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom he loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned on him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. So Peter knew that John was close to Jesus. I don't have time to talk about John. So he touched him. Why they were eating? He said, find out. So John now used his intimacy. You, a man that is intimate with God can always find out. God has no favorites. God only has intimates. The point is this. You will decide if you are God's intimate. And if indeed you are, you will find out. 
I went for a meeting somewhere and the people in the meeting came to me and said, we know you have a relationship with God. I didn't know I, I, I did. I didn't know. So we know. We are well. So because you have a relationship with God, can you go back and find out what is about to happen here and come and tell us? Hallelujah. That was a great responsibility. So what I did was that I didn't come home. I went and took a room in a hotel and I was rolling on the ground, begging. I would roll on the ground. I would beg. And I did that for how many hours? For about eight hours, rolling on the ground. And the eight hours took me to like 3 a.m. in the morning and then Jesus now shows us. The one that is intimate can always find out. But that's not where I'm going. So Peter began to beckon on John. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered and said, He it is to whom I shall give sup when I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sup, the sup, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sup, Satan entered into him. First of all, it began as a thought. Secondly, that thought became an opener. And Satan did what? Whenever Jesus wants to wants my attention, what he does is that he triggers either a thought or some feeling. There's a certain feeling that if I feel, I know that God wants to speak to me. And that feeling can be on me for three days until I find a secluded place to pay attention to the emphasis that the Lord wants to bring. Then he begins to speak clearly. So Satan was able to reach Judas Iscariot through his thoughts, and that thought began to grow. It became an opening, and then a spirit now had access to dominate him, to direct him. To instruct him. And you know, we said that our warfare is not in the context of flesh and blood, but we are at war with persons without bodies. So when we talk about persons without bodies, they have the ability to speak. The person should be able to speak. The person should have an opinion. The person can exercise his will. All right? So these persons without bodies, their entry point and the stranglehold of dominion that they set in the hearts of men is in form of thoughts. When those thoughts are intensified, those thoughts begin to migrate higher than the authority of the word of God in your membrane. And at that point, Satan is at liberty to call the shots and to drive the steering wheel. So in the case of Judas Iscariot, that was what happened. Are you still with me? All right, before we go into the, uh, we'll, look, we'll listen to um, the voice note uh, so that we can analyze. Are you there? Then we'll attend to a few questions. Uh, we have senior ministers in the place, so I will not be the only one answering questions. We have evangelist Peter in the room and quite a few distinguished uh, ministers of the gospel, so we will combine to provide the much-needed answers. Okay, so now I want to show us seven taught, taught dispositions in the Bible. Seven taught dispositions in the Bible. These are toolkits that will help us to be able to interpret the voice note that I want uh, the media team to play to our hearing. Um, there are seven, though, but I'm going to talk about uh, just three of them and maybe continue subsequently, but I'll talk, up, talk about three tonight. Okay? Can we do 
Romans. No, not Romans. Let's do Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, verse 28, and verse 21. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, verse 28, and verse number 31. This is what I call the anxious mind. You can label it the anxious mind. Anxious mind. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Good evening, Apostle. I hope what you ye are shall well. eat or what ye um, shall drink. Yes, sir. So or yet well, for your body, what ye shall put on. I encountered it's not an experience that the life to deal with. more than meat. As a minister and of the God, body I more than Raymond. Young so it, Jesus is teaching us here. He said, Take no thought. The, who came the to me for mentorship of taking thought November. is anxiety. Anxiety um, normally rides on a deficit, on a sense of need. Anxiety rides on serious Are you there? issues and attacks. All right, so in his if we say this, my pulpit is called ministry uh, and everything that what needs to do to people have this. Day? He was okay. trying to house leave house a cultic group on right. This my pulpit. The name of my pulpit is called house rent. He joined an old, old, old and maybe old, your house rent old, is old, old almost due. And God initiated into this satanic See, is uh, not network. Polite for me to ask how many people here God and are in a situation where your house rent is then, almost. He then, you know, so, was no, tormented by demonic spirits and it. went everywhere so my looking house for rent. help, but no minister. So your house rent is almost due, and because your house rent is almost then due, in, in July, you have looked uh, around, and confessed there is no solution in sight in terms of how you are going to renew the house how he was initiated. deficit into this becomes uh, the uh, hole in your armor you want a church that anxiety casts in everything from. i really did not see know what how anxiety to does such a brother is that anxiety world. is designed to make you see how vulnerable you are so that you can you will submit to satan without a fight Tim, I'll pray for you. so when the time for the expiration of your current rent is coming close then anxiety will come into the picture. What anxiety will do is that it will show you a vision. A vision of where you are evicted from the house. And that that day rain will fall. As they are moving your, your luggage, your television. Eh? Anxiety will show you that the moment you got out on the street, rain started falling. And your computer went bad. Your laptop went bad. Your iPad went bad. Your television went bad, and your vital foam got soaked and became a coat of many colors. <laughs> That's what anxiety will show you. Anxiety will so make you afraid that you will submit in defeat even when Satan has not physically started fighting you. So the object of anxiety is to bring you to a point of surrender. And so Jesus is teaching here. And Jesus says, take no thought for your life. What ye should eat, what ye shall drink, and what for your body, what ye shall put on. Then he tries to bring us into the realm of reason by saying, it's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Okay, that's 25. I said you, you jump to 28 then. Jump to 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Jesus is still attempting to address anxiety. Verse 31 there. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Jesus is still addressing the issue of anxiety. So go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 beginning from verse 6. So the first mind that I'm showing you here is the anxious mind. And that's what happens when Satan cashes in on a situation that seems to suggest a deficiency, a deficit, an incapacity. Satan takes advantage of that situation. You're already at war. And this scripture, this presentation that Jesus does here, 
It's, it's an invitation for us to guard our mind with accurate reason, accurate thinking that upholds God's fidelity as a weapon and a shield against anxiety. When people are anxious, they take steps that are not rational. When people are anxious, they surrender to the devil's uh, uh, intrigues even without exercising their faith. When people are anxious, they take upon themselves fetters and handcuffs and put on their hands and submit themselves bound to the devil. Are you there? Okay. So the first mind is the anxious mind. Secondly, I think we'll just do number two, then I'll stop. Then we'll leave the remaining five. We'll finish that tomorrow Sunday. Okay? Tomorrow Sunday. And then on Monday, we'll move to another domain of warfare. When we have seen all the domains of warfare, then before I start teaching you, the weapons of our warfare. When we see all the weapons in our arsenal, the artillery weapons, the long-range weapons, the short-range weapons, oh, like the sword is a short-range weapon. Huh? The spear is a long-range weapon. It's like a javelin. All right? So there are different types of weapons for different types of circumstances. And then you'll be taught how to engage and how to use the weapon. How to use the weapons. That's the aspect that I'm waiting for. How to use them. How to use them. Then I'm going to bring my wife. We had some experiences as a married couple. Young couple growing up in ministry. She will now give us, when we go into using weapons, I will call her to come and testify about a situation, a tragedy that we experienced, which was occasioned by, by warfare. Right? But that tragedy became the source of our strength. We ride on the strength that we got because of that tragedy. Spiritual warfare is real, and every believer must be equipped and trained to be able to bear spiritual arms. <laughs> because in 2023, we will put Satan to fly. Satan thought that at the end of that battle, that we would just fall down and say, so if Satan had known, he would have spared us that battle. Because we went and checked our weapons, and we sharpened them. Now, we no longer wait for him to come. We take the fight to him in every nation of the world that God has sent us. So I tell you the truth. I've heard, I've heard, you, you are a dead man. I've heard it in Wari language. I heard it in South African language. I heard it in uh, Zimbabwe language. And even crossovers, one, one city. Because Satan is tired. We want to make Satan tired in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, so um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. I'll stop with this scripture. This is still about anxiety. He said, Be careful for nothing. Give me this scripture in NIV. NIV. At the end of the meeting, I'm going to pray a powerful prayer. And that prayer, or I will call the evangelist to pray the prayer. The idea of the prayer is to do damage to anxiety. And just in case you are listening to me online, you are, and you are a bag of anxiety, anxiety has been haunting you, you created an accommodation for anxiety. You have a room in your house that is for anxiety. You have decorated it. You say, okay, now I accommodate you. I give you space. I know you are part of my estate, and so this is your own corner. We will, uh, we will evict that your unwanted tenant tonight under the influence of the anointing in the name of Jesus. All right, this is NIV of the same scripture. It said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. According to the NIV, according to Philippians 4 verse 6, anything that is supposed to make you anxious is the same thing that should draw you to prayer. So the response to deficiency deficits, insufficiencies should be prayer and not anxiety. The same things that should make you anxious as the same insufficiencies that should push you into prayer. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in 
everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. Okay. You will think that in this prayer, when you are praying, are you there? There is a challenge. There is a need. And anxiety is hoping to take the stage and bring you into captivity. But you found prayer and you began to address the issues in prayer. You will think that after prayer, God will solve the problem that was opening the door to anxiety. That's not how God does. Now, the next verse. Let me show you how, how God does. And the peace of God, the first thing that God does is that when you contact him, he now ministers peace into your heart. And according to the Bible, that peace is a burglary proof for your heart and your mind against anxiety. What he does is that he, he makes a proof, anxiety-proof situation, by administering peace into your vessel. So what God did in this situation is not to change the situation, but to change you. Please help me tell your neighbor. Many times, God will not change the situation. What God will do is to change you by ministering peace, such peace that transcends all understanding. The Bible says, yeah, preach, preach. The Bible says, yeah, you see how difficult it is to preach? I'm telling you what to say and, and you are already aware of it. The Bible says, it will guard your hearts and your minds. Hallelujah. So this peace that God is going to release from heaven is a burglary proof on your heart and a burglary proof where? On your mind. Because the arena from whence anxiety is born is in your mind. Oh, I don't have time. To tell you the difference between the God of peace and the peace of God. You are going to experience the God of peace and you are going to experience the peace of God in the place of prayer. The journey from praying to answered, to, to answered prayers, you will encounter what? The God of peace and you will encounter the peace of God. So, I'll, I'll stop there. But uh, we are going to do a training on prayer during the course of the year. Then I will show you the, the, the road of prayer from the, God, from the peace of God to the God of peace. So, in this scripture, the, the peace of God becomes the barricade, becomes the burglary proof that stays on your mind so that the devil can no longer manipulate your mind. And it stays on your heart so that the devil cannot manipulate your heart, which is the entry organ. Such a man that has this peace of God is immune. This is how you should be every day. Immune to the possibility of mind infiltration. So how many minds did we see here? Huh? Oh, just one. The anxious mind. All right. So we will stop here. We have seen the anxious mind. I'm going to show you all the rest. And the reason why I'm doing due diligence to show you all the different uh, possible postures of the mind is so that you can also relate with your own personal experience. And when you know where you are, you can join in the journey as we migrate to that place where we find the peace of God. Are you there? God bless you in the name of Jesus. So, um, Pastor Philip B., I don't know if you have the media, the voice note, is it available? Is it available? Or we'll leave the voice note till tomorrow so that we can attend to the question. Okay, wait. No, no. Yeah, yeah, leave. wait, wait. Let's go to question and answer. We'll do that voice note tomorrow, please. Then you see a practical scenario where someone's mind is under satanic attack. Then you will be the doctor. What will you prescribe for that patient? If it is true that you've been following my lecture and my lecture has been sinking in, 
I will demand a prescription from you in the congregation and a prescription from you people online. What will you prescribe for someone in that condition? I was on a mission trip to the United Kingdom, and I had the privilege of counseling with um, um, a British lady. In fact, the moment she came into my office, the first thing she said was, Pastor, am I cursed? I said, sit down. Who told you you are cursed? Then she gave me a story of herself, and she said, these things are symptoms of curses and all of that. So she finished saying everything. And then my duty was to move her from the place where the stronghold had bind, bound her. She was bound. So I interviewed her for a moment, and I found out that she was dedicated to a very keen to dominate, is seeking to take advantage of the possession that was dedicated to it. We are going to look at the legalities of warfare, all right? It's part of the syllabus, okay? It's part of the syllabus. The things that give Satan the authority and that makes him bold in wanting to assert his power assert his authority. Because we say that the kingdom is a sphere, is a place where an entity is at liberty to exercise his authority in order for him to accomplish his will. So when we say there is something called the kingdom of darkness, it is a sphere where the authority of Satan is exercised towards the accomplishment of the will of Satan. And that's why Apostle Paul told us, give Satan no place. Give him no ground to be able to find a justification to exercise his authority. So when we started, started educating the lady, educating the lady, then I prayed with the lady. I told her the meaning of the prayer and the significance of the prayer. And instantly, there was a movement in her mind. She no longer believed she was cursed. And that was a great feat to accomplish in 45 minutes. Because you, sometimes you might need 45 days. But if you can't get the person to migrate in the thoughts, uh, and your life flows in the direction of your most predominant thoughts, that your time of counseling was wasted. In order to keep in touch with her, I gave her my cell phone number. I said, you don't call this number, just send me WhatsApp messages about your progress. Two weeks later, she sent all the courses again. I said, Aah! I saw Satan was walking over time. If Satan has been able to keep you in bondage in your mind, he doesn't need to even come and attack you in the night. He already measured. He uses your adornment, your potential to adorn his kingdom. You are no longer a threat. All he needs to do is to send the spirit called fear to intimidate you enough in the night. And then when you wake up, you just, you even say, sorry, sorry. All right. So, Philip, you can help us with the first question. We would, we would treat the um, voice note as a practical session tomorrow, and then I will see the scriptural capsules that you will prescribe for such a case. Don't be afraid of trying. The only problem you will have tomorrow is that you refuse to talk. That's the only problem. Because we'll send the microphone around, then we'll get you to talk. What do you think? What will we do? Because we are hoping that every one of us will become a counselor. As we go out into the broken world to bring salvation, the knowledge of salvation to the people in this city, and indeed we'll do that. From international market to modern market to the streets, we'll take the gospel, and you'll find people that Satan has already defeated before Satan appeared. You must be equipped with what it takes to stage a migration. Bring them to that point where... They are assured of the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. If you lose in your soul, you will lose on the ground. So first question, you can put it on the screen. I don't know if the people on site sent questions to Pastor Tony. Pastor Tony, did any question reach you? No question. 
means all the guys on site are up to date with the understanding. Hallelujah. All right, this is the first question. He said, when I pray, I hear voices that sometimes say, I'm just wasting my time. What's the name of that? Mind bending. Is there anybody in the congregation that has had any similar experience to what this person is trying to describe? You hear a voice saying, you are just wasting your time. Okay. So, uh, um, Exodus, can you pick a microphone and give it to that young man? Let him tell us his experience. Because we are trying to make this session as practical as possible. As practical as possible. Young man, can you lift your hand so that you can be equipped with a microphone? You must not remain in that condition. It's an emergency. Hallelujah. Yeah, what's your experience? In my own experience, I long. Okay. Why in, in, the, in, in, in the course of my prayer, the voice will just whisper to my heart, are you sure God is listening to this your prayer? Are okay. Sure? So that's the voice of Satan. Now do I know it's the voice of Satan? God will never put a roadblock on your attempt to achieve intimacy with him. Are you there? It's the voice of Satan. I've not gone, we have not entered the lecture on how to deal with the voice yet. You, you just come down. I will teach you how to handle it. And if you master the things that we're talking about, before June, you'll be looking for Satan, and you, you may not even find him in the room. Satan is afraid of people that are enlightened. He likes ignorant people. He flocks around them. He stays with you. Takes one of your rooms. And he's an indigent of your compound. But the moment you begin to have insight, and the moment you begin to practice the insight you receive, Satan will need to go for long sabbatical leaves to plan for your case. And that's why the Bible says that Satan left him for a season. He will need a laboratory to gather all the data so that he can form a weapon against you, an invention that is idiosyncratic to you. We need to send Satan on course, on foreign courses, because your life is going to be a hard nut to crack in the name of Jesus. So when I pray, I hear voices that sometimes say, I'm just wasting my time. I keep casting it, but it keeps coming back. I feel I'm being mocked at. How do I get over this? I think I might need my Bible. Let me get my Bible. So I'll answer this one. Uh, equip evangelist with microphone. He will also make a contribution so that because these are basic things that each and every warrior um, has been educated on. All right. First thing that you must understand is this. There is a relationship that exists between the human heart and the human mouth. For instance, in order for you to contract salvation, salvation is available because of grace. Grace is a conduit that brings the availability of salvation. In order for you to appropriate what grace is bringing, you will need to exercise your faith. When you exercise your faith, you can lay hold on what is coming to you through grace and it becomes yours like a possession. So in the procedure that leads to our salvation in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10, you will notice the scripture says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the golden scripture. 
The next scripture attempts to explain to us why the previous scripture is true. It says, for, ah, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The capability of your heart is believing. And the capability of your mouth is confession. You see, in this contract, in this contract, your heart is capable of believing while your mouth is capable of confessing. Okay, let's do something practical here. Um, Exodus, get the mic. Give it to anyone in the congregation. Maybe someone on this row. Right? Hey. Yeah, so you tell us your name. What's your name? All right, your name is Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel, I'd like you to do me a favor. Um, any instruction I give you to do, just do it. Okay? Count from one to ten in your mind. What's your name? All right, so where did you stop in your counting? It stopped at five. Because... The moment you try to think, the moment you try to speak, to confess, you will stop thinking. It means that the authority in your mouth is more than the authority in your mind. So the cure, the cure to voices is confessing scriptures. Telling Satan what the scriptures have said. And if Satan refuses Okay, let's get the guy's question again. Ezekiel, you can sit down. Exodus, you can take your mic. He said, I keep casting it, but it keeps coming back. You don't understand. There is no other formula than to keep confessing scripture. And you cannot tell me that you are confessing scripture and you can still think. Because in order for you to, to confess, to speak, you need to stop thinking. So you keep Confess it. If the devil stops, decides not to stop, you also decide not to stop talking. So we will continue talking. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If you keep talking, you start believing it. Oh my. Oh my. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. In green pastures, he, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest... Satan has gone. He, he doesn't have time for that. He doesn't have time for that. Oh, if he comes back again, you continue. Thou preparest a table for, before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou, no, he will just he will go for that moment. You're already high. I'm already high. I'm oh, just quoting scriptures. I'm high already. So there is no way. If there is no way, you keep staying on the scriptures, confessing the scripture. This is my reality. This is my reality. Oh my God, my life is hid in Christ and Christ in God. If you want to get me, you need to get Christ first and deal with Christ and then get God. I'm too protected. I'm too covered. I am, I am submerged in God. You need to deal with God to access me. I'm in a good place. Oh my God. The devil is always discomfited when he sees somebody rooted in the knowledge that comes through the word of God. So tell your neighbor, keep talking. Keep talking. Yes. 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 Anytime the devil makes you mute, he switches off your life. And then your mind goes haywire. But we need to command that mind. You know, many times David will say, my soul be quiet. Because Satan had bombarded. So he commands his soul to be quiet. Then he begins to speak the word of God on his soul. Begins to speak the word of God. Then his mind goes and submits to the authority of the word of God. 
I went to Jerusalem. Yeah? We went to Jerusalem. We went to the wailing wall. And we saw Levitical priests with, with, with. That was when I understood the locks of Samson. And they held the Torah. And they were reciting it. They were reciting it. And they do it 247. 247. When this one finishes his own shift, he goes and does something else. And that person will come and sit on the seat. And he begins to. The instruction that was given to Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. The moment you begin to meditate upon the day and night, the Bible says you will observe and to do according to all that is written therein. Then God's part of the business will switch on. Then he will equip you with the grace to make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So I saw them doing that practically. Reciting the, the Torah facing the wall and it goes on for 24 hours in fact before you can go touch the wall you must wear what do they call what's the official name for that is that the that no not and you will take that one but there's one cap here like this uh, one small cap they'll put it here you must put on that cap before you can go so we i had I don't know where my own cap. Hey. Kabaro Mosi. But you see, I wear that cap in the spirit because the scriptures I have. Oh my God. Oh my God. The reason why you wear the cap is so that the moment you can feel what is there, you means which will be quoting scriptures. As long as you feel it and there's something on your head, the output is what? Scripture. You shall meditate upon it day and night. Evangelist, do you have anything to say on that matter? Any addition or, or, or you, you take the second question? All right, you can come up. Second question. Yeah, you can come up. Uh, can you switch on your microphone, please? Uh, this question reads, how do I secure my mind from filthy thoughts in flux? I was strongly, chronically involved and invested in sexual immorality before with dedication to Jesus. Um, right. Well, this, there is a connection. It, it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing. There's a connection to the first. Can you, can you labor to get all the scriptures that speak about your status in Christ Jesus? For instance, the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I need to explain what that means. When scripture says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that is a verdict that came from the judge in court. Satan brought you to court. And he accused you that there was a time of sexual immorality in your life. And because of sexual immorality that was in your life, all right, God should reject you. Because God cannot accept you with that situation. But Satan never knew that you made your ways right with God and you straightened out your path. You repented and you also rejected sexual immorality. Are you there? So God now declares that you are discharged and acquitted. The Bible way of saying it is you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Keep saying that as long as the sense of filthy thoughts keep flowing in you tell the devil, I am what? Righteousness. Don't stop talking until the demons are con convinced that that is your conviction. Okay. The evangelist. Is that still <laughs> the same process that uh, Paul pointed at in Second Corinthians. You know, he said, bringing every thought to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. Of the knowledge of, knowledge of Christ. So one of the things I think uh, is also necessary is you don't confess what you don't know. So we must labor in the world. Uh, the reason why some people become mute when the devil becomes too suggestive is because they lack scriptures. So if you have invested so much in, in 
banking so much scriptures in your mind, you will discover that scriptures will flow naturally. So when you begin to do that, it means that there is no thought that is, that is permitted to precipitate your mind if it is not in obedience to the knowledge of Christ. That is, that is what it means to cast down. And like Apostle said, you see, if you follow the teaching very well, you will discover he said something. It is instantaneous when we cast out every voice. It's easy. So some of us wait until when we are praying and the devil is at work before you start. It's something you must keep doing. Keep doing. Not before the, when you want to do it, only when you are praying, praying. and Satan is speaking, <laughs> you are, your journey will be too far. So Maybe. you must have to start from the... Even sometimes you know. God, uh, God recommends that you just write some very powerful scriptures that address your situation and you put them on your wall in your room. So that every morning, that's what the Bible teaches. We put it on yes. the lintels of our house. you wake, you see it. So that when you wake up, you see it. And the Lord is my shepherd. Ah, you just, it's everywhere. You read it unconsciously, you read it subconsciously. It will be entering inside and coming outside you become a slave to the word of god and when the devil begins to knock seeking an entry point he will find out that the doors are sealed the windows are sealed with super glue hallelujah and the time will come that you will not even remember this you will not remember it again it's gone that answers this question the message of salvation that we preach is a powerful message god is the one that has the key to transformation as Powerful as we look today, we were all sinners. It was Jesus that came to rescue us. And you must have seen the way I am. If I was in the world, I would have been an ism. You know that. <laughs> I would have been putting my back on the wall and disappearing. That's what I would have been. <laughs> but here, here we are in the name of Jesus. So we take the next question and then we will lead us in a prayer to dethrone the strongholds in our mind. Okay, let's just take one more question and then we'll pray. Please, can we have the next question? Why am I always experiencing defeat whenever I engage in a warfare prayer? Some prophets said there is no amount of prayer I could pray that will give me victory. There is already a problem with this question. <laughs> the prophet, the prophet is, is, is a charlatan. <laughs> so you see, you see, the thing is that one, t- one easy way to assess victory is when you even hear Satan speak because he doesn't speak the truth. So when he tells you you will die, just go and celebrate because you will live very long. The Bible says he's the father of all. So when a prophet tells you that there is no amount of prayer that you pray that will give you victory, that's already a lie, and it is contradicting the word of God. Is that not so? That's contradicting the word of God. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him, that whenever we pray according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, Everything you have prayed about, you have it. So it's a, it's a clear, and the Bible says in, you know, um, in Hebrews chapter uh, 4 verse 16, the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. So, I mean, this is just um, a matter of knowing the scripture. There is no defeat anywhere. You are not defeated. The Bible says, we are more than, can you shout it louder? We are more than, so feed yourself so well with the scripture that even when Satan comes, you bombard him with 1,000 scriptures at it in one minute. It's possible. Why am I always experiencing defeat whenever I engage in warfare? No, you are not defeated. And in case you pray and it is not hard, pray again. Keep praying. It's a continuous thing. Sometimes the devil just comes to discourage you from praying. So you need to continuously pray because it has to be a continuous exercise. Prayer is a continuous exercise. So I think this is just a lie of the devil. 
Lift up your right hand and say, I am more than conquerors through Christ. Amen. You may please rise on your feet now. We are going to pray. Are you sure you want to pray? We will not wait until Satan begins to speak. We are going to address that strong, what has become a stronghold in your mind. It is possible that there is something, there is a thought that has become a stronghold in your mind. We are going to apply a weapon. We are going to apply a weapon. Can you show me Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11? Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11. We are going to use a weapon now. As for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Now, thoughts can make you a prisoner. Are you aware of that? There are thoughts that have become strongholds that can make you a prisoner. I remember many years ago, my mind used to abuse God. Do you understand that? I don't know. It's a strange one. That is a strange thing. And I'll be fighting it. There's one. That's when I know that there are two things. Your mind can be speaking two things at the same time. One is trying to say, God, no, you are not powerful. Another one is saying, no, God, you are powerful. The another one is saying, God. So it was my mind trying to fight another thing. I wasn't using the scripture. So that kind of situation can grow and become a stronghold. And when it becomes a stronghold, <laughs> there is a weapon you will need to cast it down. Not to cast, you can't cast it out. You cast it down until it is completely defeated. So the Bible says there is a blood of covenant that is capable of sending prisoners free, setting them free. Verse 12. Turn you now to the stronghold. If that thought has become a stronghold, it will need another stronghold. Please, I want you to listen to me because we are going to pray. Some of you will be set free now, today. There are some of you that have become, you know, the moment you just close your eyes, a thought be clouds you. You begin to hear voices. You've tried everything possible and it's not going. Hear me. God brought you to this meeting so that you can be emancipated tonight. So when a thought becomes a stronghold, we can apply. There is a stronghold we can apply to cast it down. Turn you to the stronghold. Ye prisoners of hope. Remember, that stronghold can make you a prisoner. That thought can make you a prisoner. In fact, I remember one time, Apostle, a young man, my friend, very good friend, we were in the, in the prayer team together. He would tell me every time I see myself falling on a bike, it became a stronghold. One day, he fell. Because your life will go the direction of your strongest thought. He almost died. He couldn't help it. Every time he saw himself falling, every time he saw him, his bike hitting a trailer, hitting a car, and that continued until it eventually happened. Let me tell you something. Every thought you secure for too long, will happen. Every thought you secure for too long will happen. If you think that a particular disease will ravage your body and you secure it for too long, you will see that thing manifesting. If you think for too long that somebody may die in your family, oh, how about if I receive a call? There are people like that. I, I just had in my spirit. Somebody, you are just expecting that there is a call that will come. A call. A negative call. A call that somebody has died. And that, that has become a stronghold in your mind. If you don't pray effectively as we pray now, you, it may happen. But thank God you are here. So it's a turn to the stronghold. Ye prisoners of hope. Even today, somebody say today. today. I can't hear you say today. I declare that I will render double unto thee 
God will deliver you so much so that you will never remember that thing again. Are you ready? You are going to pray for yourself. We are not interceding for somebody. You will pray for yourself now. It is time. Lay your hand on your mind and say, you strong. I don't know what that thought is, but you are going to address it. Call that thought. Say, I apply the efficacious blood of Jesus to cast you down today. I defeat you today. You thought of untimely death. You thoughts of immorality that have become a stronghold. I engage the stronghold of the blood against you. You thoughts of unpleasant news. Receiving news of calamities and problems. You thoughts that have imprisoned me. That have imprisoned my mind. Tonight, I cast you down by the blood of Jesus. I'm not sure you are praying. Tonight is your night. Hey, Basketolia, that anxiety that Satan has planted and it has formed. A strong opinion on your mind cast them down now I want you to pray pray lift up your voice and pray by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus every immoral thought thought of ending in penury thought of dying young Thoughts of contracting deadly diseases. Thoughts of receiving unpleasant messages from family members. Thoughts that have become a stronghold. As I lay my hand on my mind, I cast you down. I apply the stronghold of the blood. I set my mind free. Today, you wear thoughts. You thoughts that are haywired. You destroy the thoughts. I address you. Take up a sata. I get to base toni bataya. Pray, pray, pray. Zambretosa Elis Oh Yake Batona Can I hear you pray? Pray for yourself. Every wandering thought, every thought that brings dryness to my soul, every thought that quenches my fire. I apply the blood of Jesus. Can you apply the blood of Jesus is a stronghold my God can I hear you pray can I hear you pray those thoughts must be cast down casting down imagination casting down imaginations Casting down imaginations. Zela Palekola. Babo Sobrete. Casting down imaginations. And every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing them into captivity to the knowledge of Christ. Pray. Are you sure you are praying? Hey, Barota. Jesus. Jesus. Babo Sobrina. Manekose Breta. In J. 
Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name oh I want to hear a resounding amen you can make it better in the mighty name of Jesus do you know the louder your amen the better the transformation will take place noise can bring an effect especially when that noise is spiritual can I hear a resounding amen now li listen to me listen to me uh, you can trust me you can you can trust me on this now you know why this matter is very important man man is a product of imagination Kai see if I program my heart the things that will happen to me are at the mercy of how my heart functions my mind functions so if I just think about 500, 200, 300 that's the kind of money people will be bringing that is what will become of my life you know why? because God said let us make man in our own image now the word image the word imagination came from the word image. Image is simply picture creation, image creation. So God must have thought of it before he said it, right? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. So for God to say, let us make, it means that God thought of making man. And if man is a product of imagination, it means that he's configured like that. So his imagination is very powerful. And in case you don't believe that, in Genesis chapter 11, God himself attested to this. He said, everything that he has imagined to do. Have you read that scripture? See, everything he has imagined to do, nothing shall restrain him. So God had to apply a, 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 a technology. He divided, he, he, he changed their tongues. Everything see there is a picture of your future in the scripture that if you can capture it must feature now i want you to understand it takes more time to think negative thoughts because to destroy you know to destroy is easier to, sorry to construct is easier when you construct to destroy you can just come what is constructed in, in five years you can destroy it in one, in, in one hour is that true that's how bad thoughts are can you say with me repeat with me this is powerful so whatever I capture about my future must feature Can I can I allow you? No, I have to. Can I allow you for one minute to capture something? Can I can I allow you to mentalize mentalize something for one minute? Uh, see, this is don't give Satan room now. I want you to see yourself fulfilling the mandate of God for your life. Can you see yourself getting married? Can, one minute, one minute. Think about oh, 2023. I won't receive money. It will be in millions. I, I see something. What do you see? What seest thou? What seest thou? He told Abraham, From where thou art, from where thou art, look northwards, look southwards, look eastward. Whatever your mind can capture. It was not physical. God was simply telling him, Whatever your mind can capture, I give to you. Hear me. 2023 is the prophetic year just started. Mentalize something. Capture something. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? What can you see? What can you see in your family? Do you see yourself getting married? Online? On site? What can you see? Jeremiah 111. What seest thou? I see a tree of almond and he said thou hast well seen 
and I will hasten my work to perform. If you can see well, there will be a performance tonight. What do you see? I, I see longevity. I see agility. I see strength. I see prosperity in my ministry. I see favor. Hey! Can you see yourself married in the will of God? Can you see your womb opening up to conceive and giving birth to a child? What seest thou? What seest thou? Replace that negative thought with scriptures now. Mentalize something. Picture something. There is a picture of your future in the scripture. Go there and capture it. Capture something. Capture something. Hey! Ah, yeah, yeah. Somebody feel something. See something. Mentalize something. Amen, Otolia. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, E.K. Chuku, evangelist, what seest thou? I see souls, I see nations bowing to the authority of Jesus. I see the lame walking, I see the blind seeing, I see mighty miracles. I see my brother Apostle Arabi traveling to nations. I see me and him doing wonders. I see all the point men in our CN doing mighty works, mighty revival. Evangelist, what seest thou? Apostle, what seest thou? What seest thou? I see. A mighty revival in Ukraine, in Russia, in Europe. What seest thou? What seest thou? Can you begin to pronounce the things you see? Confess it. Confess it. Confess it. Confess it. Confess. Confess. Confess them. The things you see. The things you see. Confess them. Confess them. Begin to confess them. No death. No death. No failure. I see me passing the interviews. Obtaining the visas. I see myself breaking through. Breaking forth. Building houses. Hosting crusades, souls jumping out to receive Jesus. I see myself raising the dead. What seest thou? What seest thou? Mentalize it. Hey, how about all of you? Metosia, Fabre Tosca. Somebody confess the things you see now. Pronounce them. Declare them. Declare, declare, declare the things you see. The things you see. Ah, Reverend Don, what seest thou? Pastor Tony. What's yes now? Evangelist Philip, what's yes now? What's yes now? Pastors, apostles, brother, what do you see? What do you see? What can you mentalize? What can you visualize? Abbas Ekoto. 
level. Everybody can shut up. My God, there shall be a performance of the things you have seen. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance of the things you have seen. Hey! But we all, we all, with an open face, beholding us in a glass. Beholding. Whatever you behold, you will hold. My God, whatever you behold, you will hold. We all, we all, beholding us in a glass. As in a glass, the image, the image of the Son of God are transformed, are transformed into the same image by the Spirit of the Lord. What image can you see? What can you see Jesus doing for you this year? What can you see Jesus doing for you in your ministry? What can you see Jesus bring it to pass? We are. We are. We are. Behold it. What can you see in the world? What can you see in the world? Man think that in his heart. Hey, I am. 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 I let that amen be resounding in the name of Jesus. It can be better in the name of Jesus. You can take it higher in the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands. Beginning from this moment, every thought that is accommodated on your mind that is not consistent with the knowledge of Christ is abolished forever abolished forever abolished forever in the name of Jesus everything you have visualized you have mentalized you have captured about yourself in 2023 that you are breaking away from ancestral limitations that say nobody in your family can get married. If you can see it, it comes to pass in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Calling those things that be not as though they were. Whatever you have called forth from the realm of the spirit, they come to pass. 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 They come to pass, they come to pass, they come to pass in the name of Jesus. I want to hear seven loud amen. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Hey, 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 go ahead and burn that utterance into your spirit with some capital letter tongues, impress it on your spirit, superimpose it 
as a new law, the moderation, the protocol, the policy, and your life in wrong and burn it in. Burn it in. The best of prayer have no access to the seed soil right now. I move from 34, I move to 64, and I transit to 100. I
said to me, come back. He is coming. Therefore, we will not faint. We will not faint. We will not faint. Though our outward man perish, our inward man is being renewed. Day by day, we are bigger than our life and momentary affliction. Oh, not all of us. Connections for power has been installed. If we stay here a little longer, the meeting will extend more than you can bear. Hallelujah. Whether you are following streaming this meeting right in the very comfort of your room, there is power there. There is power there. There is power. There is power. Power, power, power. Somebody say power. A man met Jesus. He said, come before my daughter dies. And Jesus said, go, your daughter is made whole. Right from where Jesus was, he didn't need to get there. You know why? Power went out. Online, on ground, wherever you are, there is power right where you are right now. Can we give the Lord a big, big shout of praise? Oh, yes. Great things are in store and in stock. I don't think this is a meeting that anybody should, for any reason, absent himself or herself from. These 40 days, they are couched in the very bellies of God. And so much is already um, 
provided for. You need to make yourself available for what God has provided for in the name of Jesus Christ. You are streaming this meeting online. The Lord bless you greatly. Welcome to church. Those of you in the overflow, the overflow of the online church, God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. The account details for, for the offerings, um, special offerings, first fruit, your tithes, whatever it is that the Lord is laying in your heart. Perhaps during the course of the meeting, you've had a movement, a persuasion 